Hey, what's happening, guys? Um, about six months ago, I did a video on creating a uh, AC to DC power supply using a uh, transformer and a bridge rectifier. And I got a bunch of comments that that was the old-fashioned way of doing things, and that's not how things are done anymore. And if you're a fan of Big Clive like I am, you know a lot of the stuff that he tears apart uses what he calls a capacitive dropper or a capacitive power supply. And uh, that's what we're going to put together today here is a capacitive power supply that converts an AC input to a DC output. But before we get into that, let's first talk about a uh, full wave bridge rectifier because I'm sure there's a few guys who might be watching this who aren't completely familiar with how it works. And it's pretty simple. You create a full wave bridge rectifier using four diodes or you could just buy one. But I think it's important and this is what I teach my students is how it works and why it works so that you can make one yourself. So you have four diodes you have AC inputs and you have your DC outputs. And the easiest way to remember is all of your diodes point towards the positive DC output. Now, the way this works is really simple. Okay, let's uh, do this real quick. There's our sine wave. There's zero volt, there's positive voltage, negative voltage. So when we're talking about an AC voltage, the voltage goes positive and negative. Here in the US, 60 times per second. In the UK, 50 times per second, which is not really important for us right now, but just to hit on the point. Now, a DC voltage looks something like this. So, if we, we can use one diode to create half wave bridge rectification, which will end up looking like this. The negative portions of the sine wave are clipped off. But if we use a full wave bridge rectification, it looks like this. And what's happened is those negative portions have been flipped around. So if when this part of the AC wave is more positive than this part, the current comes in here, travels through this diode, and out through there. But when this part of the sine wave is more positive than this part, the current comes in here, flows up through here. See how simple that is? It flips it around makes it really simple for everybody. Okay, so here is our bridge rectifier. And now we need to bring in our AC inputs. So we're gonna bring in one here. With the resistor, we're gonna use 100R. This is for the uh, American market. You're gonna need different values for the European. And that is to protect us against voltage spikes. Now our other input is going to have our capacitive dropper. In this case, we're going to use 8.3 microfarad, 200 volt. And we are, of course, going to put a discharge 
resistor across it. So now we have our AC input coming in. And due to the capacitive reactance of this capacitor, capacitive reactance, known as X, and the formula to find capacitive reactance is one half pi times the frequency times the capacitance. So x equals half pi times 60 hertz times 8300 microfarad or nanofarad. You can do the rest of the math yourself if you want. Now, coming out of the positive end here, for stability, we are going to bring in another capacitor. In this case, we'll use like 100 microfarad going to ground. And then for regulation, we're going to bring in a reverse biased Zener diode, in this case, a 5 volt Zener. And then a couple of current shunt resistors, we use 10 Ks. And boom. There is your capacitive power supply. And this is going to output 5 volts at somewhere around 50 to 70 milliamps. Somewhere in that general range, plus or minus, say, 10 milliamps on that. And here's the circuit that we just talked about. So here's our AC input here. There's our 100R resistor coming over to feed one side of the bridge rectifier. There's our 8.3 microfarad 200 volt capacitor with its discharge resistor across it feeding the other side. And somebody forgot to put the ground wire in there. There we go. So there is the positive DC positive end of our bridge rectifier. Feeds this resistor here, which is a load resistor, going into our capacitor to ground, over to our zener to ground, over to our current shunt to ground, and boom there's the output. Now I don't have an isolated uh, AC power supply here and I do like living so just for uh, safety sakes I am not going to plug this in and I recommend that unless you have an isolated power supply and if you don't know what I'm talking about you don't have one you definitely don't want to make yourself the easiest path to ground and potentially any part of this circuit is live at mains voltage which in the u.s can vary from 110 volts to you know 150 160 volts if you're in the uk you know considerably more up to 330 volts so you do not wish to become a part of that circuit no isolated power supply don't mess with it consider this just for theory now on the downside of making one of these power supplies there is no galvanic isolation uh, two they're generally used for low current and three your voltage and current output can vary with swings on the ac input now you know where i live 
in the Midwest here in the US, very near Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, we have a very stable power supply and it's not a problem. But if you live in a rural area where your power may swing, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20 volts at any given time, you might see a little bit of change with a circuit like this. But these are, you know, this is exactly what you're going to find in your standard USB wall wart phone charger. It's also what drives um, LED bulbs that plug into our Edison sockets. It is uh, just a very simple little power supply. So I hope you guys learned something. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, give me the old thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share. Don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all my patrons. That's it. I'm out. Peace. Yeah.